It's a sermon series called Repairs of the Breach. This name of this sermon is called Reviving the Stones. Reviving the Stones. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 1. You got the exposure is 801. Page 801. Thank you. Are getting faster and faster. Amen. If you're not, keep telling yourself that. Faster and faster. Finding the scriptures of the Word of God. Before you know it, you're going to go all in here. You'll be able to pull it out when the enemy comes. Everybody there? But it came to pass that when Sambalot heard that we built the wall, he was wroth, and took great indignation, and mocked the Jews. And he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria, and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? If you bow your heads, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you with your holy word, Lord God, open it. Open our hearts, Lord Jesus, to receive your word this morning. Lord Jesus, there's nothing that we can do without you. Every step we take, we got to hold your hand, Lord Jesus. We ask that you hold us up, that you give us wisdom and understanding, and how, dear Lord, to apply this word to our lives and our hearts, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray for unity. Unity, dear Lord, in the faith. We pray for love, Lord God, that we love you first and foremost and love one another as we love ourselves. Help us, Jesus, to decrease and you increase again. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. amen. Praise God. What we've been on is a sermon series called Repairs of the Breach, where we've been comparing the day of Nehemiah in around 430 B.C. with our day even on today, spiritually. In the days of Nehemiah, we know that God did a mighty move. He sent Nehemiah back to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls to protect Jerusalem and rebuild the gates that were burnt with fire. They've been hewn down, burnt with fire, and everybody despised Israel and Jerusalem. They were taking advantage over the people that were left behind and took most of the people into captivity. I believe in our day the same thing has happened in many ways. Many ways the walls of doctrine of truth have been hewn down in the church as a whole. Yes. When you look at the church as a whole, there are many things entering into the church. We were just talking about that in Sunday school that will blow your mind. It blew my mind in Sunday school to find out some of the things that they're doing in the church today. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I see some of it, but I don't know all of it. And when someone comes up with something new that they're doing, that they're putting in the ways of the world, it just absolutely just floors you. Because you can't understand how and where they're getting this from. But the spirit of the world has come into the church. I mean, they're using the foggers and the light system and all the disco stuff. And it's like a social club. And when that stuff, when that wall is torn down, Souls are not being saved anymore. Matter of fact, souls are being tossed. So I believe what God is doing now is He's calling us to be repairs of the breach. A repair, there's a breach that's been given in the church. He's calling us to put this in our hearts, to understand true doctrine of the Word. And where we're supposed to point our place and point our faith always in Christ and Him crucified. That wall needs to be placed back up so souls can be saved, deliverance can be met, and captivity is gone. There's many people in the pews that are Christians that are in captivity because they're trying to put their faith in themselves. They're trying to put their faith in sowing a seed to meet a need instead of placing their faith in simple what Jesus did at the cross to meet their needs. All these things are happening right now. The gates have been hewed down of faith, and faith has been placed in many different things. And I believe the Lord is rebuilding that right now. We've been comparing these two. We're on chapter 4. Because when you start to do these things, opposition will arise. <laughs> How many know when you start going the way of the Lord and you catch fire for Jesus and you want to know more about Him and you just want to love Him and you want to hug Him and you want Him in every part of your life, the opposition comes. It doesn't come when you're complacent. It doesn't come when you're apathetic or lethargic. Satan can care that he's got you when you're lethargic and you stay home and you don't want anything to do with the Lord or you don't want to know any more. You just want to be saved and have the fire insurance. i got the fire insurance to get out of hell free card. I'm going to be okay. Right here. Yep. Mm. Got to get out of hell free card. Don't need to go in. <laughs> He'll leave you right there. 
But when you say, no, 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 I know, I want to know my Savior. Amen. I want to know Him. I want to learn of Him. I want to catch fire for Him and I want Him to use me. And guess what happens? Then opposition comes. Mm -hmm. Well, in chapter 4, opposition came because they were rebuilding these gates <laughs> and they were rebuilding these walls and it was to protect, <laughs> protect, excuse me, I'm stone, <laughs> stone, to protect Jerusalem as it is now spiritually to protect the church because we need these things. So let me start back over with verse 1. But it came to pass that when Sambalot heard that we built the wall, he was wroth. It's the same with Satan. He is wroth when he hears that we are rebuilding these things not only in us, that the Lord is placing these things in our heart, these truths in our heart, and this revelation in our heart, but also that we're speaking to others out there. We're starting to talk to others about where faith should be placed. We're starting to talk to others about what's supposed to be right in the church by the word of the living God. We're starting to place and tell other people what's going on in God's word, and he is wroth. He doesn't like that. He wants them to stay exactly where they are. But God has got a plan. I believe in our day, He's going to. there's going to be a revival like we've never seen Amen. before. Amen. And I, that's why I named this sermon, Reviving the Stones. Let me keep reading. He took great indignation and mocked the Jews. You will be mocked. And he spoke <coughs> before his brethren in the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? First, you see how he called them feeble. But let's, let me tell you something. If God be with you, no, you're not feeble. No, no, no. If God be with you, church, you're not feeble. No. That's the enemy. That's Satan calling you feeble. When you feel feeble and you hear that all the time in your ear, in your mind, and you say, I, I'm weak and I'm feeble, you need to rise up and say, Greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. I am not feeble. So you know where this is coming from. Oh, it's not coming from flesh. It's coming from spirit. We don't fight against flesh and blood, but against spiritual principalities in high places. Believe me, these were the leaders. And there's leaders now that are calling the Christian faith people. Yes. Have you noticed that? Yes. Well, y'all are kind of backwoods and y'all hold to y'all's religion and guns. <laughs> you hear that all the time, don't you? Oh, They're calling you feeble. Something's wrong with you. you don't believe in evolution. Don't you know that we're intelligent these days and that's what we teach in the universities, evolution. And y'all believe in creationism? You better believe it, praise God, because God is over all. Amen. His wisdom makes ours... I, 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 you can't even go there. Yeah. there. Man has no wisdom compared to God. But immediately he starts calling them feeble. What do these feeble Jews... Will they fortify themselves? You better believe it. Praise God... That's what I was talking about. When you start getting rooted and grounded in the doctrine of truth and the word of the living God, guess what happens? There's a fortification that comes around you, around the spirit of your mind. And then when someone tries to plant evil seed, wherever it may come from, even in your children, once your children are rooted and grounded in the faith because you brought them to a church that's teaching the truth, praise God, when the school teachers teach evolution or teach anything wicked, it's protected. There's a fortification there. Amen. It 